and don't you forget it. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what they call this stuff? Coxcomb. And speaking of coxcombs, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of our finer efforts, three-dimensional, three-dimensional, isn't this nice? It's a soft sculpture, right. and this was provided by the very lovely Lois Blankenship, uh -huh. who, who picked these, these up, up at a yard at a, sale. A yard sale. <laughs> They nice. I love them. I think they're <laughs> real cute. But anyway, uh -huh. that's enough of that. Oh, welcome to Cooking Cheap. Uh, do, do you know the uh, correct name for that? Oh, of course not. <laughs> well, what kind of you're botanical the only wonder? Person, you're the only person I know that knows the real scientist. I was telling that's someone. Celosia. Celosia. Now, what are these things? What? Uh, are these some kind of little uh, that's, pansies uh, or no, something? No, that's chrysanthemums. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And what's their proper name? Chrysanthemum. Mum's the word. Right. Okay. Well, we're getting letters from around the world and uh -huh. we're going to start yeah, reading them. Right. Dear sirs, mm -hmm. my name is Debbie Plymail and I have written you before and have used the recipes that you have given me and I love the food and would like your recipes for your latest show which was called, well, I forgot what the show theme was called, <laughs> like Mr. Potato Head or something. I know it sounds like Chinese food. You made stuffed tomatoes. Yeah, that sounds real uh, Chinese. Please send me the recipes for those dishes. I just love your show and think you're very funny too. Thanks, Debbie Ply Mail. P.S. Sorry for all my mistakes, which by the way, Debbie also has a mistake in it, in my <laughs> handwriting. But she's a good viewer. 101 yes. Valley Mill Road. Her telephone number is. <laughs> she lives in Huddleston, Virginia. And writes us a whole lot. We hear from her all the time. <laughs> Gentlemen, my wife and I really do enjoy your program, Cooking Cheap. Keep up the good work. We have never seen you clean up the floor with your dishcloth. That lady needs her glasses changed. Oh. Remember the finger lady that got after oh, yeah, us that's right. about yeah. using the dishcloth to clean up the floor with? Well, thank you. This is from J.M. Lego. I've used your blocks many times. <laughs> and uh, he came to our defense. <laughs> used your blocks. Well, dear Laban and Larry, my wife and I really love your show. I, I believe you just put all the love your show uh -huh. ones in here. Our local station, WTIE in Bloomington, Indiana. Quit broadcasting in it some time ago. <laughs> Showing extraordinary things. No, it doesn't <laughs> say that. And we wrote in to protest. They now carry it again. Now that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. Did you actually quit making your shows the last year or two or did our station simply show bad taste in not picking up the syndication? <laughs> well, your station, station simply, simply showed, showed bad, bad taste. taste. <laughs> At any rate, we've enjoyed your reemergence and your new format. Although we miss the Cook Sisters, have they just have we just missed them, or have they gone their merry way? We're also wondering: Do you sell T-shirts or any other sort of cooking <laughs> cheap paraphernalia? We'd love to have something or sign pictures. Well, now for twenty-seven dollars, we will send you sign pictures. At any rate, keep up the good work and keep the shows rolling. Faithful yours, John and Mary Wolford of Bloomington, Indiana. Well, we want you to know that the Cook Sisters have, as you know, those of you who've been with us for a number of years, uh, have been in a nursing home, and because of uh, Blue Ridge Public Television, where we are so comfortably ensconced, <laughs> worthless cur, uh, has. Uh, just uh, really been treating us r really well this year. We will be going sometime this year to the nursing home to visit Sister and Tootsie. Oh, good. And uh, good. so that all of their fans can keep up. Right. This paper bag came in and said, Dear Laban and Larry, I constructed this envelope just to mail, mail to you guys. It seemed an appropriate cheap container for your show. Really enjoyed the Spain show. You mentioned it was raining during the taping. It was raining here when I watched it. Isn't that amazing? Must be the rain in Spain or perhaps <laughs> in each life a little rice must fall. And then we want to thank uh, Ava Lee, whoever she is, for sending us these two lovely band-aids. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she knows how bad we need them Well, sometimes. she knows that we're such cut-ups uh, down oh, here. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, let's anyway, get over here and do these let's recipes. Let's do. This is real pretty. Doris Ford, thank you very much. It always does good work for us. She's helping us out on the staff this, this year. <laughs> and what can I tell you? I don't know. What can well, you Well, I don't know. Ah, I don't and know. you can tell us that, too, if you, you knew any about right now. But anyway, what? Oh, excuse me. I left my beverage. Oh, no. How terrible. All right. I'm doing zesty sauerkraut chicken sent in by Dolly Mullins of Wise, Virginia. Thank you, Dolly. This is a neat recipe. And I am doing a piquant <laughs> coleslaw. A piquant <laughs> coleslaw. 
which is a zesty coleslaw, and I'll be starting on that in just a couple of minutes. But first, Laban's got All right, this here important we, message. Now we're going to fry chicken, which we've done before, but this is kind of this is two thirds of a cup of all-purpose flour. It goes down in the bag here, and now some. This is really a spicy recipe, as we say here in the South because into it we're going to put two teaspoons of secret seasoned salt. salt. <laughs> <laughs> the secret and salt. This is my Justin Wilson imitation. Boink. That's two teaspoons of seasoned salt. <laughs> now, and we've got to have, this is um, a teaspoon of garlic powder. So let me see if I can get this baby over. I here. thought about you yesterday. I opened a new one of those up. Oh my heavens! What? Well, it just looked like a lot of it ran well, out. Well, you know that's the way it looks, but it's not really. Uh huh. That yeah, I'm and sure. And we have to have a teaspoon of onion powder. Did you? But I went to open up a new one yesterday, and I had a terrible time. I had to get a special tool to get it open. It had been hermetically sealed for my protection. <laughs> And I thought oh, about I your remark last week about please don't nobody kill nobody no more because we just can't stand all these the safety things stuff were the same way things. when I opened these up. They're yesterday. terrible. They're you can't get in there. I well, don't know I don't know. I took get the top the off stuff. of this one and the hermetic seal came off up in the top, and oh, that was no. a lot of fun. I don't too. know how old people get into these things. Let me ask Laban. Laban, how do you get into those? By things? the very hardest. <laughs> and now we need all right a half a teaspoon of salt, as if this didn't have enough salt in it. And a half a teaspoon of ground pepper. Oh Lord, my oil's burning up again. But what can I do? Buck, 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 buck. Sounds like that. Uh, sounds like that apron's talking, Laban. Well, it probably is. I'll never. What in the world are I, you doing? I can't lift you. All right, and a half a teaspoon Good. of ground pepper. Heavens. You reckon this has got enough stuff in it? Temperature all right. has gone way up. Now in here. all of these spices and everything, we're going to flip around in here, and. I've got some chicken thighs. He doesn't know what he's the doing. The thighs of a young chicken, and they're going to go down into the bag. You're going to shake and bake here a little We're bit? We're going to shake and fry. Shake and fry. Now, you could use a whole chicken cut up, but the best deal at the store yesterday was on the thighs. That happens a lot. That's called nobody wants them. Well, I think the thighs for frying are real fine. Now, put that. That's a half a cup of hot earl. <laughs> and, and now we're going to put Bag the thighs down in the frying pan, skin side down to start out with. I've got you under, under my, my skin. skin. <laughs> I've got you under. The, this stuff is going to be, you'd think it would just ruin your mouth. But actually, because uh, of the Oh, look at it swelling up. Processes that come down later on, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay, now, that, that's all you have to do. You're going to put it down in here. Now, when you're frying chicken, yeah. when you are frying chicken, you put it in, you start at high heat, you adjust it down just a little bit, and then you don't mess with it. You leave it alone. Don't be peeking to see if it's ready. Do how not long, mess with your chicken after you put it in the oil. How long do you leave it alone Until for? Until it's ready. Well, how do you know if well, you don't look at it? Well, I'm going to show you after a while. I'm going to show you. But you don't want to be flipping around. All right, Larry, it's your turn. Hit it. What, what do you do to me if I peek under there? <laughs> I'm going to smack you upside the head with these greasy wooden spoons. I think a peeking under there makes sure they're doing all right. Well, I'm making a piquant coleslaw. Now, it's a real zesty coleslaw, and you'll find out why when you see me go through the misery of this. I was in my kitchen yesterday crying. Oh. I had to take this big onion, onion, onion. is what his name says, and I had to take that thing, and, well, you'll see, it's not a pretty sight, and I was just crying. Well, may as well get started, I guess. Yeah. No one's going to do this for me. Teaspoon of mustard seed. You know, Laban, if you just had and the, the faith, faith of this <laughs> bottle... <laughs> They're real funny looking little things, and when they get away from you in the kitchen, they just go ever well. My cats thought it was real funny. They were chasing them around. Now, one and a half teaspoons of celery seed. This thing has some, and I have pre-made some because it has to marinate, or as they say up where I come from, marinate. marinate. 
and it has to marinate for about uh, a couple of hours. So I have some that I secreted away into my personal refrigerator yesterday afternoon. And incidentally, for all those fanatics that wrote in, yep. we did wash the chicken. Oh, we've washed before. everything. We spick and span this entire kitchen before we started a while before ago, we, and we, I don't want to hear nothing about it. Now, three tablespoons of wine vinegar. That's white wine vinegar. I used red yesterday, but I dropped the thing, <laughs> and the lid went from one end of kingdom come well, to the other. Well, it's too bad we don't have some of that fig vinegar that guy three. wanted to sell us. One. Two, three, white wine vinegar. You can use red if you want to, it doesn't matter. One cup of sour cream. I'm going to guesstimate. I know what a cup looks like. You ought to too. Really? That's close. Uh, three tablespoons of minced onions. Boy, this is where the fun comes well, in. Well, don't mince this your onions. A, well, I'm going to mince words, but I'm not going to mince this onion. I can't stand it. Now, this thing is a mincer, and it does a, an immensely good job. But I'm telling you, I was crying so bad when I got finished with this mess yesterday. Well, that's a real slick little doodah. Where did you I get that blind? I said terrible things about Mr. Johnson for giving you, me this where recipe Where did you do. get that little mincer? Oh, s some fool I know gave it to me, some buffoon. Well, you could use your electric food processor, that big $300 model you got no. sitting on your counter at home that you never use. Well, this is cooking cheap, and I thought I would do it this way. Oh, because, well, good. Now, Laban gives me all these wonderful little devices that he knows about and nobody else knows about. And this is one of them, and it'll mince it up just real fine. See, it's got all these gnarly things on. You get your fingers on there, you will just have a good time. Gnarly. So gnarly. what you got to do is start out with a big onion. Is that a, like a gnarly Davidson? <laughs> Getting worse by the minute. Uh, oh, oh, come on, come on. Well, they've gotten hostile on us. <laughs> Three tablespoons of minced onion. That's about two. Took about half this onion to get three yesterday. I reckon I'm going to quit soon because I'm not going to start this crying jag on the air. It's not good to see a grown man cry. Hmm. I don't know why not. I've seen you go to pieces any number of times. <laughs> Larry gets upset, oh. and he starts doing his Patsy Cline imitation. I fall to pieces. Well, we're going to stop working on the onion because it flew off into the distance. Well, distors. you dropped your onion on the floor. Well, I, I done well, had you all I need. could never put it in the, into the dish now because the finger lady would write us a letter and badmouth us. Well, I got a few things now, for the finger everybody, lady. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want, but anyway. uh, I want to show... This fine fried chicken now, I'm going to flip it over because I detect by the smell oh, for that it is sake. ready. So let's see. You've rehearsed this before, Look. I can tell. You don't fool me. Well, it is right pretty and brown, but any fool knows if you got it on high for 10 minutes, it's got to be brown on the bottom. You're not telling me anything. You're oh, ye of little faith. You're not working with a buffoon here. I've worked in the kitchen a little bit. But I will have to admit it is real beautiful. Now, can I get back to this? <laughs> I guess. Are you going to let me finish this recipe? Go ahead. He thinks he's Richie Valens. All right, two, two teaspoons of sugar. Is that right? Well, I yeah. And a half teaspoon of salt goes in here yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just continue. I'm picking up where I was the last time that you were with me, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where I am. Now that's it. Now that's just the stuff that goes into. What do you drink that? The coleslaw. No, no. What you do oh. is take a little whisk or spoon or something like that. Startling overhead shot. There you go. Isn't that gorgeous? And just mix that all up. Now that's very pretty. It really is. Now what you'll do, that's the sauce. And you will take that now and put it in a little container. You can put it all, this is in a, one of them tub containers. And put it in the refrigerator for about two hours or overnight if you want to. It would be ideal overnight and that will just marinate real well. And then the next thing you got to do, of course, is you have to take a head of cabbage. And well, this why one, don't you get a big one? Well, this one has this plastic on it for my protection. <laughs> so we're going to take that off. Don't forget to take the plastic bag off of it. Yeah. Because you don't want to have the cabbage disease. And it's better if you cut it in half 
like that. And now we're going to start, well I'm just going to shred it right here on this thing. It says six cups of shredded cabbage. And that's just one of those things you just guess. You know what I mean? What I like to do is get it down to where I can handle it a little bit. And start shredding it. And if you got a food processor, it's much easier to do as long as you don't overdo it because you don't want to overprocess it because mm -hmm. you'll ruin the texture. Right. And you know there are a lot of texture people out there. Well, and so this is what I'm going to do now back to Laban. Well now I've got a can of sauerkraut. Did, did y'all ever sour. make kraut on the farm? No, but they used to before I came along. But that was before my time, Laban. I know you think there's nothing before my time, but they didn't do well, that after I came you know, along. I've always, I've always loved sauerkraut. I'm I guess they figured I was sour enough. I'm just going to drain it out down here in, the, in this cabbage leaf oh, that you so terrible. thoughtfully provided how for How awful. Me. How gross. Well, we don't want to put it down in the sink because they leave that down there for years. And this would, this would smell real bad after a while. But your sauerkraut needs to be drained out pretty good. It's got a lot of juice in it. Sauerkraut is fermented cabbage, for those of you that don't know any difference. Do you know what the uh, Korean version of that is? Kim choi. Kimchi. Chi. Kimchi. There's summer kimchi and there's winter kimchi. And the summer kimchi is real hot. No, the winter kimchi is real hot and the summer kimchi is real mild. But it doesn't. Oh, when did you taste. take up Koreanism? Well, I was in Korea oh, for a year. Oh, that's right. Oh, Come I forgot about that. Oh. Well, long. Now you I can't tell you what that means, but after it the means show, I'll you want to go back to the barracks with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you're gonna put this kraut down in here. Boy. Oh, here comes the recipes rolling under us. Be careful; they're gonna come up here in a little bit. We're giving you fair warning now. You could prevent a whole lot of paperwork if you get out your junk, your pencils, your paper. Right. Prevent Miss Doris from having to do an awful lot of work. Now I she have get paid a much anyway. To be honest. With you. What? This is a 14 ounce can of chicken broth. Chicken stock. Broth o oh, the fine chicken. And I'm going to add this to this dish over here. I'm not going to do any more of this stuff. Why? Because I'm tired enough. and I don't have yeah, a big we're enough bowl. Add this right in. And I'm quitting. It's just about what I need. Now, Larry. What? This is all you have to do. This is recipe. You got your chicken is all nice and brown. Oh, what what a a buffoon am I? What a clown! I forgot I was supposed to drain a good bit of the oil off, but that's all right. Oh, now it's going to be real greasy. Yeah, well, you know, the one I got that I'm going to serve is okay. Anyway, you're supposed to take the chicken out and drain the oil off. And that's what this plate was, and this paper towel we're going to be for, but, well, blew it. What can you do? Well, now, I have shredded, isn't that pretty? Oh, that's I lovely. have shredded up a, a bowl just as much as I need today. I'm not going to shred the whole thing. I had a goodly amount left over. If I was going to feed an awful lot of people, I'd have shredded the whole mess up. It calls for six cups. That's not six cups, but it's not much as I'm going to do. And last night, or yesterday afternoon, I worked myself into a whatever. A frenzy. <laughs> frenzy. Making this piquant sauce up and I'm going to take it now and I'm going to pour it over it. This has marinated all night long. Ooh, I'm going to take good. that and dump it over that. I don't want to overdo it. You don't want to make it too sappy. And we'll mix that all up. <laughs> Old Dobbin is out here again. <laughs> <laughs> give you a time cue of that. You hear him pat the foot. How much is two and two? Now Five. It's, it's just a matter of personal <laughs> preference as to how goopy you want coleslaw to be. I don't think it ought to be real runny. I think that coleslaw ought to have a little, you know, little, what would you call it, a little consistency to it. <coughs> That's why I don't like processing yes. the, the stuff. It processes it too fine. It should mm -hmm. be nice and grainy. Oh, Very that pretty. looks real tasty. The coleslaw, a teaspoon of mustard seed, one and a half teaspoons of celery seed, three tablespoons of wine vinegar, one cup of sour cream, three tablespoons of minced onion, two teaspoons of sugar, a half teaspoon of salt, six cups of shredded cabbage. And of course, all those first, all except for the last one, you mix all that up together and put it in a fridge overnight or a couple of hours so that it'll, you know, do its thing. Okay, now I'll go slow, but there are a lot of ingredients on this. 
zesty sauerkraut chicken, you need two thirds cup all purpose flour, two teaspoons of seasoned salt, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of pepper. One chicken cut up, that means <laughs> severed and split apart, rended. Uh, one half cup vegetable oil to fry it in, and a, a 14 to 16 ounce can of sauerkraut, and a 13 and three quarter or 14 and a half ounce can of chicken broth. And that's what you need for this recipe. And incidentally, Lair, I forgot to tell everybody, you need to let the chicken broth, the sauerkraut, and the chicken simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. And when it does that, as you'll see right now, we have a beautiful golden sauce. And Ooh. if I was a mind to, I could take my turkey baster and siphon off the uh, grease oil that I forgot to drain grease. out. Call it whatever you but want to. Anyway, it's grease. this cooks down into a, an utterly fabulous sauce here that will be very spicy and delicious to have. I believe it's time for Miss Witch to come by. Well, where is the old witch? With our letter O the day. Letter O the day, where is she? You know, she's not flying as fast since she's in a witchy way. <laughs> <laughs> here she comes, witchy way. She's a witchy woman. All right, you, you, I'll let you do the honors, because <coughs> I did last week. <laughs> Dear friends, yeah. we were talking at the potluck social the other night at church about pumpkins. We go to the Sweet Redemption Church of the Holy Saints out on Route 43. You know where it is. Just turn at Bailiwick's store and go down about three miles until you get to Hoskins Old Place uh -huh. and take that little dirt road that runs down through the holler and then pick up the driveway next to the de dead skunk that is laying under the mailbox on your right. Uh -huh. Thanks so much and remember, let's go to church next Sunday morning. Uh -huh. And that's from Mrs. Etta James in Little Grove, <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> We have less now, wait than a, a minute, a minute wait to a minute. get where we're going. I can't going. figure out what Ella what? wants. <laughs> well, I guess it must be something to do with pumpkins. We're going to do pumpkins next week. I promise you, not only that, we're going to go out in the field and show you real pumpkins right. as they grow in their natural habitat. <laughs> They've never been seen on television this way before. I'm going to take my stuff over. and Mr. Okay. Johnson's getting his hot stuff out of the stove right now. Here Move we on. go. We're going to get this turkey on the platter. This piquant stuff and you give me some of that stuff and we'll just see what we got here. Oh, it looks and smells delightful. It really does. I'm going to try some of this chicken. Johnson's home fried chicken. Ooh, it's hot too. It smells yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I cooked this yesterday and put it in this little casserole because I, I was afraid we wouldn't have time to have it properly here on the air. Ooh, it's so hot it burns my mouth. I have such a sensitive tongue. Mmm, it is good. Mm -mm. That is delightful. The chicken, mmm, -mm. that's a good recipe. I like Ooh, that. And the, the Let me try some of the slaw. Wonderful. It is. You know, I'm just a basic old slaw person, but I think this probably has changed my mind. I really oh, like I that. Oh, I think I'd make that at home. That's mm. so good. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, I think we've scored a uh, number one here on the air this week. With a bullet. Absolutely. These are real good. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week at this same time. Bye.